the class, we are looking at lesson 8.5 using the distributive property. And to this point, we have had a lot of practice with adding, subtracting, and multiplying polynomials. And we've been doing a lot of binomials times binomials, like this one, 5x plus 3 times 2x minus 4. We've used FOIL to help us remember to multiply everything. 5x times 2x is 10x squared. 5x times negative 4 is negative 20x. 3x times 2x is plus 6x. And 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then when you combine like terms, you get 10x squared minus 14x minus 12. Um, I, where we are going with this is, and we're not there yet, so we're not diving in with this, but where we are going is you are given this, and this is a, this is a challenging one for sure, and you have to give us this. So you're given, you are given um, a polynomial and you have to factor it. And that is where we are starting in 8.5 is using the distributive property. And looking at the assignment, I divided it into two parts. There's actually three parts, 1 through 12, 13 through 18, and then 19 through 26. And so we are going to go over, I think we are going to go over the um, even ones, and then you will finish the odd ones. Um, the thing about factoring is it requires a lot of practice. So if we were in the classroom, I would we would have out the whiteboards and would just do lots and lots of practice. But we can't do that. Um, but we will do practice. To, we'll do several together, and then you will try some on your own. All right. So the first twelve. The reason I pull those out is we are going to use the distributive property to factor out. We are looking for the largest factor, the greatest common factor. And sometimes it is in the coefficient or a constant. Sometimes it's with the variables. So let's look at what I mean by that. All right, let's look at number two, 8m minus 6. You always want to look at the, at the numbers and then look at the variables and see if you can factor out a number and see if you can factor out a variable or variables. So 8m minus 6, our numbers are 8 and 6. Is there something I can factor out of 8 and 6? What is their greatest common factor? Well, the greatest common factor is 2. So I know I can factor out a 2. Now we're looking at variables. Well, only one term has a variable. And if only one term has a variable, we can't factor one out. Um, so 2 is the only thing we can factor out. So then, what is 8m divided by 2? Well, it is 4m. Then we got this minus sign, and then six divided by two is three. So we factor out a two and we get two times four and minus three. You can always multiply it out to make sure you're correct. Two times four m is eight m, yes. Two times negative three is negative six, yes. So that is number two. Let's look at number four. We look at the numbers, 10 and 25. Is there a number? Do they have a greatest common factor for 10 and 25? Well, it would be 5. Now, here's the, the, the interesting thing. 10 has a Q attached, and 25 has a Q squared attached. Since they both have a Q, I can factor that out. And I can only factor out to the first power because that's the, um, because, um, that's, that's the only thing I can factor out. So 5q to the first power. All right, and so then we do 10q divided by 5q would be 2 minus 25q divided by 5q. Well, 25 divided by 5 is 5. q squared divided by q is q to the first power. So it would factor to 5q times 2 minus 5q. And again, you can multiply, apply the distributive property to see if, if it works out to the same thing. 5q times 2 would be 10q. We got the minus sign, minus, and then 5q times 5q. 5 times 5 is 25. q times q is q squared, so it would be 25q squared. 
All right, let's look at six, 81R plus 48RT. All right, so look at our numbers first, 81 and 48. What is the greatest common factor of 81 and 48? They do have one and it is a three. So three is our greatest common factor. Now let's look at our, our variables. We've got an R here and this has an R and a T. Well, they both have an R, so we can factor out an R. All right, so 81R divided by 3R. Well, 81 divided by 3 is 27. My mental math skills, yep. Um, R divided by R, they cancel out. So it's just 27 plus 48RT divided by 3R. 48 divided by 3 is 16. The R's are going to cancel out, but the T remains. So 3R times 27 plus 16T. And again, use the distributive factor. 3R times 27, 81R. 3R times 16T, 48RT. All right, let's look at number eight. Number eight, there is no whole numbers, there are no numbers in there. There's just variables. All right, this first term has a and b, the second term has a. This is a squared, but this is a to the first. I can only factor out an a to the first. So I'm gonna factor out a. And now a squared b squared divided by a. Well, a squared divided by a would be a to the first power, which is just a, and then b squared. Nothing got canceled out there, plus, a divided by a is 1. And again, a times ab squared is a squared b squared. That's good. We got a plus sign. a times 1 is a. That works. All right, let's look at 10. 10. All right, I see uh, this is a 3, this is a 6. That looks good, but this only has a 1. There's a 1 there, even though it's not written. So there's nothing I could, the greatest common factor of three, six, and one is one. I'm not gonna factor out the one right now. All right, they all have a P. This is P to the squared. This is P to the first power, P to the first power. I can factor out a P. This has an R squared, this has R, but there's no R there. So the only thing I can factor out is a P. So three P squared R squared. Well, the three and the R squared are going to just, are gonna stay. The P though, P squared divided by P is P to the first power. So we're gonna do three P R squared plus, all right, six P R divided by P. The P's are gonna cancel out, leaving six and R. Six R plus P divided by P is one. And then use your, um, use the distributive uh, property and see if it works out to this. Well, if I multiply three or P times three P R squared, it'd be three P squared R squared, which works. Six R times P would be six R P or six P R. And then P times one would be P. All right, we're good there. All right, let's look at number 12. We've got a 10, a 2, and a 14. Uh, they do have the greatest common factor of 2. Uh, H, the first term has an H, second has an H, third has an H, and this has H cubed. This is H to the first, H to the first. So I can only take out H to the first. And do I have N here, N here, oh, and N here. And I have n to the first is my smallest, so I can only go in, I can only factor out n to the first. All right, now we've got three different things we're factoring out. All right, 10, so let's just take it one step at a time. 10 divided by two is five. H cubed divided by H would be H squared n cubed divided by n would be n squared. Okay, and then we got a minus. All right, so we are going to divide. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 
I'm not going to write one as a coefficient. H divided by H is also one. I'm not going to write that. But we got N squared divided by N. N squared divided by N is just N. And then we got a plus sign. All right, 14 HN. So 14 divided by 2 is 7. H divided by H is 1. Oh, H divided by, oh, I got stuck. H divided by H is 1, and N divided by N is 1. So the H and N both cancel out, so it just leaves the 7. All right, that was a little bit, um, a little more complex. But as long as you are strategic and a little bit systematic about this, um, you should do fine. All right, the second. The second section, I, I drew a line here because this is a little bit different. If we look, b squared minus 2b plus 3b minus 6, there's nothing that goes through all of these. But what I'm going to do is I am going to group them. We are going to use a grouping strategy to factor. And I am going to group these two because I can factor out a B out of both of them. Okay. And then I'm going to group these because 3B and 6, they have a common factor of 2 as well. All right. So each of these, the reason I have each of these are grouped in a similar way. You can uh, factor something out of the first two terms, and you can factor something out of the next two terms. You can factor something out of the first two and the next two. All right, and you'll see where we're going here in a minute, maybe. Um, okay, so let's take this first one, b squared minus 2b. I can factor out a b. So I'm going to do b times... All right, b squared divided by b would just be b minus 2b divided by b would just be 2. Make sense? Then we got this plus sign, okay? 3b minus 6. Well, I can factor out a 3 out of both of those. So plus 3 times 3b divided by 3 is just b uh, 6 minus Six divided by three is two. Okay. So now I've got B minus two times B and B minus two times three. Do you notice that I have the same factor here? So I can factor that out, B minus two, And b times b minus 2 divided by b minus 2 just leaves the b. And then we got this plus sign. 3 times b minus 2 divided by b minus 2 leaves a 3. So when we factor both of these out, it leaves the b plus 3. So this simplifies to b minus 2 times b plus 3. OK? All right, let's do another one. I'm going to draw a line because I need to write a little smaller. Okay, let's look at this one. I may write it under and then finish it here. All right, 2a squared minus 4a. I notice that I can factor out a 2. And I can factor out an a. Okay. So if I factor out a 2a, 2a squared, what's left? Just a. And if I factor out 2a, we got this minus, what is 4a divided by 2a? And that's just 2. Plus. All right. This is, this is where it gets kind of tricky, but I think, um, I think you'll be okay once you see this. a minus 2. The greatest common factor of both of these is a 1. So I am going to factor out a 1 and do times a minus 2. Okay, And the reason I did that is because it, then it will follow this pattern up here. 
they both have a minus two. So I can factor out an a minus two. And once I factor them out, what's left is 2a plus 1. So this factors to this. All right, let's look at this, these two. All right, this one's trickier yet. OK, 9x squared minus 3xy. I can factor a 3 out for my number. They both have an x. This has x squared. This has x. I can factor x to the first power. Um, they don't both have y. So that's all I can factor out. So 9x squared divided by 3x. Well, 9 divided by 3 is 3. x squared divided by x is just x minus 3x squared. I mean, 3xy divided by 3x. The 3x will cancel out, leaving just the y plus, all right, 6x minus 2y. The only thing I can factor out is a 2. And then 6x divided by 2 is 3x minus 2y divided by 2 is just 1y. We write y. All right, now both of these have 3x minus y that we can factor out. So we are going to factor out. 3x minus y, and what is left is 3x plus 2. Okay. I would like you to try these three on your own, um, but they all have this same kind of pattern. Um, you are going to factor out from the first half and then the second half, and then you're going to finish it. First half, second half, first half, second half. All right. Let's go on to the last one. Okay, 19 through 26. It says to solve each equation, check your solution. Okay. Um, let's see. All right, 20. I noticed that 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, and 24 all have equal zero. So let's, so what that means is this can be zero times any number we want, or this first B can be any number we want times this second can be zero. Does that make sense? Anytime you get zero as an answer, one of your factors is zero, okay? So there are two ways that we can get zero. We can make B zero, okay? And if we made B zero, this would be zero times, in parentheses, zero plus 12, zero plus 12 is 12. So zero times 12 is zero. The other way is to make B so that my parentheses equal zero. So what does b have to be to equal 0 here? Well, it would be negative 12. Negative 12 plus 12 is 0. And then um, 0 times negative 12 is 0. So there are two ways that we can get 0 with this because we have two factors. Either of the factors can be 0. I hope this makes sense. So when you have two factors like this and it equals 0, when you solve it, you have to solve it for both situations. So this B, it can be zero. And if that B is zero, then the whole thing is zero. Or B plus 12 has to equal zero. Okay, so the first factor has to equal zero or the second factor has to equal zero. And then you solve for this, B equals negative 12. So the answers, I'm going to write it in set notation because there's a set of answers. There's a set of two. The answers are, and generally we'll write it in order, negative 12 or zero. There are two solutions to this problem. So let's look at 22. We've got two factors. A minus 9 is a factor and 2a plus 1 is a factor. 
and we need it to be equal to zero. We need when we multiply these together, it equals zero. So either the first factor is zero or the second factor has to be zero, but one of them has to be zero. So we're going to solve two ways. We're gonna solve so that the first factor is zero, and then we're gonna solve so the second factor is zero. So a minus nine equals zero. So that means a equals nine. Makes sense, there's your first one. Second factor, two a plus one. Two a plus one equals zero. Um, we would subtract one from both sides, 2a equals negative one, and then a equals negative one half, okay? So again, set notation. There are two answers that make this correct. Either a is negative one half or a is nine. Whoops, a set notation. All right, let's look at 24 y squared plus 3y equals 0. Okay, this is a little bit different because, because it's not a something times something equals 0. Okay, it is y squared plus 3y equals 0. Okay, this is kind of tricky, isn't it? Okay, so what we need to do Oh, we need to factor. We need to factor. All right, so let's factor so that we have um, something that looks like this or like this. All right, y squared plus 3y. What can we factor out? Well, we can factor out a y. And y squared divided by y is just y plus 3y divided by y is 3. Okay, you see what we did? We factored out the y and made it 0. Now we have two factors. So y can equal 0 or y plus 3 has to equal 0. So y would equal negative 3 in this case. So the two answers for 24 are um, negative 3 or 0. All right, last one, same thing. We have to factor. All right, 2x squared minus 3x. Well, we can't factor a whole number. Oh, 2x squared equals 3x. Oh, it's not equal to zero anymore. Okay, let's see. Let's move this so it equals zero. We're gonna move this. So 2x squared minus 3x equals zero. Do you guys see what I did? I moved it over. So it equals to zero. Now, can we factor something out? Yes, we can factor out an x. All right, 2x squared divided by x is 2x minus 3x divided by x is 3, and that equals zero. So now this can be zero or this can be zero. If either one of them are zero, then our answer is zero. So x has to equal zero or I'm gonna write 2x minus three equals zero, add three to both sides, 2x equals three, divide both sides by two, x equals three halves. So in this case, we have zero or three halves. Either one of those will satisfy this. All right, you guys, I want you to do the remainder, remaining ones on your own. If you have questions, you can ask during Zoom or send me a message um, and we, I will help you. All right, you guys, have a great day. Talk to you later.